What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to multiply radicals that have variables and exponents in them. So let's start with this problem right here, the square root of 8x times the square root of 3x. Okay, so I basically have a bunch of crap under a radical times more crap under a radical, right? So what you wanna do here is combine all your crap. Okay, so you're gonna have just basically one big radical symbol and then you're gonna combine all your crap right here. Okay, so we have 8x times 3x. So that's what you're gonna put here. 8x times 3x, okay? Now we can start simplifying this a little bit. Basically just combining the like terms. So here we have eight times three and eight times three is equal to 24, right? And here we have x and an x. So x times x, that's equal to x squared, right? So 8x times 3x is equal to 24x squared, right? So now that we multiplied all our crap together, now we can start simplifying this. Now what you want to do here is take the square root of just the number and take the square root of just the variable, okay? So we're going to split this up into the square root of just the number, which is 24, and then we're going to multiply that by the square root of just the variables, which is x squared, right? So the square root of x squared. Okay, now here we have the square root of 24. Can we simplify this? Well, we can, okay? Because if you think of the number 24, how can I break that down into its factors? Well, I could break it down into four times six, right? So we can do the exact same thing over here. The square root of 24, we can break down into the square root of four times the square root of six. Okay, and I specifically chose this pair right here, right? Because there's other pairs I could multiply together to get 24. I could multiply 12 times 2. I can multiply 8 times 3, right? But I specifically chose 4 and 6 because 4 right here is a perfect square. So since I have a perfect square right here, well, what is the square root of 4? Well, the square root of 4 is just 2. And so here we have 2 times the square root of 6. Okay, so we simplified the square root of 24. Now let's simplify the square root of x, or x squared, I should say, right? So we're multiplying times the square root of x squared, and the square root of x squared is just x, okay? So we're just gonna multiply by x, okay? Now, since x is not underneath a radical symbol, right? It's just outside by itself. It's all free and stuff. It's free, just like this two is free, okay? So I'm gonna put those next to each other. So the 2 and the x, I'm going to write it as 2x, okay? And then we're still multiplying by this square root of 6, okay? So square root of 6, right? So then that would be your answer right there, 2x root 6. So here we have the square root of 6x cubed times the square root of 3x, right? So again, I have some crap here, some crap here. So I just want to combine all the crap right off the bat, right? That's your first step, combine your crap. So uh, we're going to have 6x cubed times 3x, right? 6x cubed times 3x, okay? So now let's simplify this. So let's start with the numbers first. So here we have 6 times 3, and that's equal to 18, right? So 18 right there. And then here we have x cubed times x, which is equal to x to the fourth, right? Whenever you're multiplying variables that have the same base, right? We have an x here and an x here. You just add the exponents together. So there's a three over here, and then there's technically a one right there, right? So three plus one is equal to four, right? So x to the fourth, okay? x to the fourth. Okay, so now that we uh, combined all our crap, right? We multiplied, multiplied it all together. Now we can start simplifying this by splitting it up, right? So again, I'm going to take the square root of just the number and the square root of just the variable. So I'm gonna split this up into the square root of 18, right, times the square root of x to the fourth, okay? Now, the square root of 18, again, that's not a perfect square, right, but we can break it down into its factors, okay? So 18, I can break down into nine times two, okay? We can also break this down into six times three, but I wanna use nine times two because nine over here is a perfect square, right? And whenever we can include perfect squares, we wanna do that, right? Because that simplifies our math a lot. Okay, so the square root of 18, again, I can break down into the square root of nine times the square root of two. 
Okay, and the square root of 9, again, is just 3. And then we're multiplying by the square root of 2, right? So the square root of 18 is equal to 3 root 2, okay? So now we're going to multiply that by this right here, the square root of x to the 4th. Now, the square root of x to the 4th is simply equal to x squared, okay? Another way you can think about this is, well, whenever you're taking the square root of basically anything, it's the same thing as raising it to the half power, okay? So this is the same thing as x to the fourth raised to the one half power, okay? And I know it's a fraction I'm already dead to, but this is actually a little easier than you think because whenever you have a power raised to another power, you simplify that by just multiplying it together, right? So here we really just have four times one half, which is equal to two, right? So then this is actually equal to x to the second power, right, or x squared, right? That's where the x squared comes from. So again, we're multiplying by x squared right here, okay? So then we're multiplying by x squared, okay? So as you can see, uh, we have a 3 and an x squared, right? Those are not inside of radicals or underneath radicals. So those are nice and free and out in the open range. So we want to just combine those together. So we're going to write that as 3 x squared, and then we're still multiplying by this root 2 right there, right? So square root of 2, okay? So then that would be your answer right there. 3x squared times the square root of 2. Okay, so here we have the square root of 20y squared times the square root of 5y cubed, okay? So again, first step is just combining all your crap underneath one big radical symbol, right? So 20y squared times 5y cubed, right? 20y squared times 5y cubed, okay? Now we can keep simplifying this, right, by combining like terms. So 20 times 5, that's equal to 100. And y squared times y cubed is equal to y to the fifth power, okay? So now again, we want to just take the square root of each of these individually, right? So we're going to take the square root of 100, and then we're going to multiply that by the square root of y to the fifth, okay? So first of all, the square root of 100, that's actually a perfect square, right? The square root of 100 is just equal to 10. All right, so that was easy enough. Now, uh, how can we simplify the square root of y to the fifth? Now, just like we've been breaking down the numbers, we can do the exact same thing with the variables, okay? So y to the fifth. So first of all, with the numbers, Whenever I was breaking the numbers down into its factors, I wanted one of the numbers to be a perfect square, right? And again, the perfect squares are 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, right? We could keep going. Those are perfect squares. I, I want to try and include one of these numbers in one of my factors, okay? Now, when we're talking about just variables, the perfect squares that you'd want to use are things like x squared or x to the fourth, or x to the sixth. Basically, just something that has an even power. Okay, we can use any variable, right? We can use y squared, or y to the fourth, or y to the sixth, right? But again, the important part is using an even powered, or an even numbered power, right? So here, y to the fifth, we can break down into either y to the fourth times y to the first, or y squared times y cubed, okay? So these two right here are basically my perfect squares. So which one should I choose? Well, you normally wanna choose the bigger one, okay? Because that's gonna cut down a lot of the work that you have to do, okay? So in this case, the bigger one would be y to the fourth, right? It's bigger than y squared, so that's the one we're gonna go with. We're gonna go with y to the fourth times y to the first, okay? So again, I can break down y to the fifth into y to the fourth times y to the first, right? So here I can break down the square root of y to the fifth down into the square root of y to the fourth times the square root of y to the first, or just y, right? So what is the square root of y to the fourth? Well, just like we saw in the last problem, it would just be equal to y squared, right? And then here uh, we're multiplying by the square root of y, and we can't simplify that anymore, Okay, so that would just stay as the square root of y. And then lastly, we still have this 10 right here, right? So we have to bring that down. So we're still multiplying by that right there, okay? So here we have 10 times y squared times the square root of y. 
right? So then we would just basically combine these two as 10 y squared times the square root of y, right? So that'd be your final answer right there. Okay, so here we have the square root of 8y squared times the square root of 3y to the fifth, right? So again, I just want to combine all of this crap under one big radical, right? So we have 8y squared and 3y to the fifth, okay? 8y squared times 3y to the fifth, okay? So then we can, again, simplify this, right? Combining like terms. So here we have 8 times 3, which is equal to 24. And then we have 8, or sorry, y squared times y to the fifth, which again, just add the exponents together. So that'd be y to the seventh, right? So y to the seventh power, okay? So again, the next thing you wanna do is split up your numbers and your variables, right? So here we're gonna do the square root of 24 times the square root of y to the seventh, okay? Now the square root of 24, again, that's not a perfect square but we can break that down into its factors, right? 24, again, we can break down into four times six. So here we can break this down into the square root of four times the square root of six, okay? Now the square root of four, again, is just equal to two. So we have two times the square root of six, right? So we just simplified the number. Now let's simplify the variable. So y to the seventh, right? Now y to the seventh, we can break down into, remember we wanna use an even number, right? So here we would use y to the sixth times y to the first, because we could also use y to the fourth times y to the third, or y to the second times y to the fifth, but we always wanna just use the biggest exponent. So six is obviously the biggest exponent out of all of these, right? So that's what we're gonna go with. Okay, so the square root of y to the seventh, again, we can break that down into the square root of y to the sixth times the square root of y, okay? Now, the square root of y to the sixth is equal to y cubed, okay? And again, the way you could solve that is, you know, y to the sixth. So we're taking the square root, again, so that's like raising it to the half power, okay? So again, it's like raising this whole thing to the half power. So what's six times a half? Well, that's just equal to three, right? So that's why we get a three right there, right? So we get y cubed and then we're multiplying it, multiplying it by uh, the square root of y, right? Square root of y. Okay, so then here we have two root six times y cubed times the square root of y. So the last thing you wanna do here is basically combine like terms, okay? So whatever's underneath a radical, you wanna combine those together and whatever's not, underneath a radical, so the two and the y cubed, you wanna combine those together, okay? So first of all, here we have a two and a y cubed, right? Those are not underneath a radical, so we'll combine those as two y cubed, right? And then we're gonna multiply that by whatever's underneath a radical, so this six and a y, right? So then we would just put a six and a y right there, okay? So then your final answer right here would be two y cubed, times the square root of 6y. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out and I'll see you there.